So I recently posted to the community tab. If you know what that is, it's almost like a Facebook feed, but it's on YouTube. So if you go to the channel, there's a tab that says community. When you click that, it's just me posting pictures and links and stuff like that. But anyway, I posted that recently for members saying, what videos would you like to see, right? Because the channel is basically me or the missus just going, I got to do this today. And so you just kind of rattle off a video naturally as you live our, as we live our lives, building bikes and going into stuff and da 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 da. Well, members, I feel like should have input. Like, what do you want to see? And I put on there, what would you like to see? So there's a lot of really good suggestions. And today is the first video of like member suggested topics. And that is what have been the closest calls you ever had on a motorcycle? So there's probably a million, right? I mean, I started riding in my early 20s. I'm now in my late 40s. So in that two decade plus period of time, Lots can happen, right? So there's a billion little things that like you go off a ride and go, oh yeah, a truck almost killed me yesterday. That kind of thing, you know, someone comes over on you, etc. Quick side note, I don't think I've ever been surprised by someone coming over on me, right? Like, it, it, I'm sure you're all like me. When I'm rolling, I'm riding, I, I, tied, I look at everyone's eyes or on the cars around me. Like I'm always looking at everybody, which makes it exhausting. But I do think that while Harley, or while Harley, while riding a motorcycle in general, is a relaxing thing, it's also intense, right? You should be focused on the people around you, the cars around you, that sort of stuff. And so I'm constantly trying to make eye contact. And I've all, I have i can't think of a time where I haven't. I'm on the highway and you go, this son bitch is coming over on me. Like you just know it. And then sure enough, they come over. And so when you're prepared, you can adjust, you can move, you can honk, you can give them all the visual communication that you want to give them, you know, or maybe remove their mirror for them in their car if you got a big boot on. Anyway, so that happens all the time. So what I'm talking about are, today anyway, scary moments where you're like, Jesus was sitting there with a cocktail shaker going, nice to meet you, bud. Come on in. That kind of stuff. Well, there's a couple of those I thought of that are kind of fun. Two of which were in Sturgis. Um, one of which did not actually involve me. It was the dude in front of me. But me and Bull were rolling up Needles Highway, story number one, and there was an asshole in front of us in a, in a car with a local plate on it, and it wasn't a rental. It was like a several-year-old Kia, right? It's not a rental car. Had a South Dakota plate on it, although you can plate vehicles from out of the state. Anyway, I'm assuming it was a local. And I'm also assuming they were 174 years old, just from the way they were driving. And they were probably bringing relatives up to show them Needles Highway. You know, how, how do I know? But I'm just kind of guessing. And they were like all over the road, right? So one of the most dangerous things on Needle Highway, Needles Highway is somebody not keeping their track, coming over the line, and you end up head on. You come around a blind, you know, 90-degree uh, uh, turn or even a 180 switchback that's blind because there's like a hill right here. And you come around it and bam, right into the front of another bike or another car or whatever. And there are plenty of jerks up there that, unfortunately, they go to Sturgis, they can't ride a motorcycle to save their ass. And they go up Iron Mountain Road and they just don't know what they're doing and they go too fast and that kind of stuff. So that stuff happens all the time. But in this case, it was a car. And they were just all over the place. And we got to, I can, I can vividly remember the moment. And everyone was okay before you freak out, but it was scary. We get to the top of a hill going up, I think it was Needles, where there was a more than a 90 degree, maybe 120 degree-ish turn, and there was a hill here. So it's two lanes, right? It's, it's, I'm sorry, it's, it's two total lanes. We're going this way, there's an oncoming lane. And there was a hill blocking, you know, where you could see. This car, sorry about the camera work, I suck at this stuff. This car drifts into the oncoming lane as we're coming up to this turn. And this dude comes around that turn on a motorcycle. Thank dear sweet baby Jesus, this dude happened to be in his right track. So he was real close to the line, close to the hill. And this car hadn't come all the way, all the way over. And so that bike missed that car by an inch. And if you've ever looked into somebody's eyes and seen the fear of death, it'll, it'll rattle you. And that's what this was. This dude... I saw him go, <gasps> that, that sort of guttural, I mean, it was, it was bad, man. It was real bad. Never believe there's a delivery coming.
So it was worthwhile stopping for that because it was a bottle of whiskey a buddy of mine sent. So it's <laughs> worthwhile stopping. Anyway, so back to that dude. So he was in the right track. Had he been in the left, I mean, I mean, those simple, he, we were going probably 20, he's probably going 20. I mean, you can, you can die in a 35 mile an hour combined head on collision on a motorcycle, right? right? So this dude missed that car by inches. And I saw in his eyes, the, just the horror of a car being not where it's supposed to be in like an inch from your leg, right? Like it, it, it was bad. And then actually the, the funny thing is, as soon as we got through that turn, there was a parking lot. And that car pulled into the parking lot and Bull, who was leading, chased that car <laughs> and blocked him in and was like, we are husbands, we are fathers, you're going to kill somebody's dad, knock at the, p I mean like, da -da -da -da. And, and as he pulled away, you could see him shaking his head like Bull, Bill Bull has a rage problem sometimes and we got to the next stop and he goes, yeah, she was crying, <laughs> but, but hopefully she won't kill somebody's daddy, you know, like that, that kind of thing. So anyway, or mama. So yeah, so that, that's, that's one that we weren't involved in, but it was scary. It was real scary. Uh, the other was a different year, also Sturgis, um, and, and nothing happened, but it was how close it could have been, and we're talking about close calls, is we're coming down, downhill to a 180 uh, right turn switchback. So we're right track, obviously. And when we get to the other side of the hill, right, the hill's right here, we get to the other side of the hill, there is a giant buck scared and standing on the hill, like he's crouched up on the hill. And we come around and we hear noise because he's doing this on the rocks and you just turn your head and it was like, I could have just, I could have just touched his nose. Like it was that close. And had he decided to jump at that moment or right before, we would have hit a deer. And at that time, the, actually it was a couple of years ago, so the missus was on back. My buddy Joe was in front and we were actually kind of going fast. It was a little stupid. So had he jumped, that would have been bad. That was a scary one. Now, the, the funny thing about that is didn't have the fear of that until it was over. It happened so fast. But you realize after the fact how bad that could have been, right? So story number two. Story number three, it did happen. It, it went down. It went bad. Um, this is 2007. Uh, I had a V-Rod. Um, the wide tire V-Rod. It was actually called the VRSCW was the model number, whereas the old one was VRSCA. Um, VRSCW, the W for wide tire, uh, had a 240 rear tire. This is not part of it. I don't know why I'm going down that, that bit of detail, but um, the, the, the story goes, I work in professional services. I have for many years, and at that time, I was working for an accounting firm that I worked at for a long time. And all, even though I'm not an accountant, all accounting firms have a tax season party. That is April 15th, when they've all worked, you know, 16 hour days for three months straight, every day, um, there's a big party, right? Everyone goes out, there's dinner, there's music, there's open bar, that kind of stuff. And my responsibility as a member of leadership of the firm was to stay there until the very end to make sure that all, everyone got into a taxi if they need to go to a taxi. Nobody got drunk and drove, that kind of thing, right? So I was there until very, very late at night and wasn't drinking. A, because I was keeping an eye on the youngins, and B, because I was on the bike. I had ridden my V-Ride to the tax season party. Now, April 15th is rather cold still. In, this is still in St. Louis. Uh, again, 2007. So 16 years ago? 17 years ago? Yeah, whatever. So um, we leave this bar that the thing is at. I'm heading home, and it's freezing cold. It's, it's actually really cold that night, and there was a lot of dew on the road because it had been, it's a time of year that's kind of weird. It hasn't warmed up yet, but, you know, it warmed up enough that when it got cold that night, this dew, everything was wet, you know what I mean? And I stop on the way home at White Castle because I'm hungry, and I haven't been able to eat because I've been working all night at this freaking party, keep an eye on the youngins, make sure they're having fun and not dying. So I stop at White Castle, get something to eat, and then I pour myself onto my bike, and I start heading home. So St. Louis is a very old city. I know a lot of you live in old cities, but St. Louis is an old city. It goes back to 1700. So you've got streets that might be from the teens, you know what I mean, that were laid out. We still have, we have brick streets in some spots in St. Louis. And on my way home, I'm making a 90 degree right turn. Not a high speed. It's off of, off of a 45 mile an hour zone into a 35 mile an hour zone. So I'm not cooking or anything. And uh, as I go into the right turn, there is a manhole cover. This is where the old streets thing comes into it. 
uh, there's a manhole cover right in the apex of the turn. You wouldn't normally see that today, right? Like they plan that stuff out better, but right in the apex of this turn is a manhole cover. And because it's a very old sewer system, that manhole cover is brass. It's not old iron or whatever like you see or steel. This is a, basically from all the years of cars going over it, a polished brass manhole cover right in the apex of a turn. You can all see, if you've ridden a long time, where this is going. So there's a lot of dew. The road is soaking wet. There's a lot of water standing on a polished brass manhole cover in the apex of the turn, and I'm on a V-rod. Now, why is a V-rod significant? If you know much about them, you know the rake is rather intense on a V-rod. It, it really is. Like, when you turn the bars on a V-rod, you're not turning them as much as they're falling to one direction or the other. The rake is similar to, like, a breakout, right? Like, it's, it's, they're, they're out there. They do not handle well. It's a drag bike. It was designed, actually, the V-rod, fun fact, the, the uh, name of the project is Willie G and all of them were working on it, it was called Digger, Project Digger, because it looked like a digger style chopper, you know, way out front and stuff, slam down low, all that. So the, with that rake in the apex of a turn on a wet polished brass manhole cover, the sidewall of my front tire just let go. I mean, seriously, I lost all grip on the side of the tire as I was going through a turn and it let go. And when it went down, I mean, I wasn't going crazy fast. I went down hard. I mean, like, slammed down. The bike spun away on the side. Uh, I, I was just knocked funny. My, my helmet was crushed on the right side. I was wearing a full face, thankfully. Uh, crushed on the side. I bounced off the ground. I was wearing jeans, boots, and, like, a jacket, but probably just mesh or something with probably a sweatshirt underneath. Trying to think of how I dressed 17 years ago when I was, you know, much younger and stupider. Uh, slam down on the right side, bust that helmet all up, and I crunched hard on the ground. And the bike spun away. Thankfully, the car behind me was a cop. He saw it happen. So he gets out of the car and says, stay there, it's fine. I already picked myself up. Stay there, it's fine. And I'm trying to get my bike. Like I'm trying to pick it up. And <laughs> as I'm trying to pick the bike up, not to be gross, I can hear crunch, bang, crowl, bang, pow, like from the right side of my body going to somebody, right? Because I was in shock. He's like, why don't you go lean against my patrol car and I'll get your damn motorcycle up because he rode. He's like, I ride. I understand that you're worried about your bike, but you go lean up against my car. I'll deal with your bike. So he gets it up and starts gathering parts because, you know, turn signals had snapped off and, you know, the, 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 if I'm correct, the license plate holder under the back of that was plastic. So that was, sma it was snapped off. So I'm sitting on the patrol car and he comes up and says, Something ain't right. <laughs> I'm like, why? And he goes, that arm is a lot lower than that arm. <laughs> like, this one was down here. Like, So he called an ambulance. And this is where the story actually gets to be funny. Um, ambulance comes. And the missus knows this story. It's no big secret or whatever. And uh, two smoking hot, like, 23-year-old EMTs get out, get out of the, 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 the bus, as they call it. And they're like, get on the gurney, lay down, whatever. And I'm still, I'm still woozy. I'm still not really aware of what happened because I just bounced off the pavement at 35 mile an hour. And uh, uh, they put me on the gurney. They put me in the, in the, in the bus. They're driving me to the hospital. And they get on the, the one up front. One's in the back with me just going, you're all right, just chill out. The one up front gets on the, on the horn and says, we got an X number year old male fell off his motorcycle. And I just yell, I did not fall off my bike. I laid it down. I just like yelled that from the back of the ambulance. She hits the paddle and goes, correction, he laid it down and lets off the handle. And I can hear laughter on the other end. Like they're laughing at me at the, at the, <laughs> in the emergency room of the hospital we're going to. We get to the hospital. They bring me in. Like, oh, this guy fell off his bike. I'm like, I didn't fall off the bike. Like this is like kept going over and over again. And they put me in one of the little spots and like, all right, you have to go have x-rays. They bring me this little room. They're like, lift your arm. I'm like, <laughs> you know, trying to do this stuff. Going, this doesn't work. And about, it was actually about 30 minutes later, the pain hit. And I mean, like I was in labor breathing, <laughs> like it hurt real bad. And they're like, ah, you just dislocate. A little bit like, quit. You just dislocated it. Quit being such a P word. I, I have a little girl, so I don't say that word as much as I can anymore. Um, 
And and uh, and they just let me sit there suffering for a while. And I'm like, this really hurts. Is there something, anything you can give me? And they're like, ah, shut up. About 20 minutes later, a x-ray tech comes running out and yells, it's all broke. It's not dislocated. Give him whatever he needs. Like, just get to, you know, take care of the pain because it's, it's not dislocated. I had basically snapped the ball off my arm into my shoulder and just shattered it. So the the ball on top of the arm was like if you they said it was like if you boiled a hard or a, you know hard boiled an egg and then dropped it. So it was all sitting together, but it was shattered and it was broken off. And the top of that bone was kind of split. You know, it was bad. It was real bad, and it was incredibly painful. So many many shots of morphine later, they get the pain under control. Now the funny thing is that night. I'd actually called my father first out of fear of retribution for having a motorcycle. So my dad came in the middle of the night and sat there and, and uh, you know, helped me, got me home and that sort of stuff. And um, after the pain pills, finally, you know, the pain shots actually finally took, took the edge off. We discussed a way forward and they were like, well, doctors are hilarious. They're like, well, you're not an, an athlete and you don't swing a hammer for a living. So let's not schedule surgery let's just immobilize it and see if it draws itself together like the human body is rather amazing it might draw itself back together and be good enough to use and that's what we did so they just strapped my arm down and i walked around with a liquefied shoulder for months while it slowly did draw itself together and reattach um so i was lucky i didn't have to have surgery now this shoulder this is the one that happened to hurts all the time constantly it constantly aches uh, if I lay on my side in bed and put my arm up in a couple seconds, it goes, remember that some bitch, remember that 17 years ago, this is going to hurt. So I, I, you know, it's constantly doing that. It pops all the time. It's, it's, it's a problem. And someday I'm going to have to have surgery. But they said at that time, if you have surgery now, you're going to have to have it done every 10 years and you don't want that. So there is my worst accident was the time I went down and broke. Oh, I also like cracked my knee and I hit, it was dislocated. And that, so my... Uh, my no, it was my ankles. What was my ankle or knee that was dislocated? But my ankle and knee were both screwed up too. But the broken stuff was up here, and uh, yeah. So to this day, I have a bad right shoulder that I have limited mobility, and that's about as high as I can go for. It got starts really hurting. Um, and then I have a right knee and ankle that aren't right, which is why, if you ever notice, I do have a bit of a hobble, and that's from that. It's this like and I, <laughs> this kind of thing I do. I'm sure when I'm an old man, I'll have that great sort of uh, wobble back and forth, but. That's my story of my worst accident. Um, again, this is gonna be a members only video for a while. I might make it public later, but for quite a while it'll be just for members because I want you guys, you guys to comment down below like, what's yours? I, I care, I'm interested, I wanna hear your your crash stories and close calls. So I had, I had lots of close calls with those two I shared, but the one time it went beyond close call. So let me know if you liked this. If this was fun just sitting there talking and telling stories because uh, you know this was a response to somebody's comment. So. Anyway, love you all to death. Take care of each other out there. We'll talk real soon. Bye.